Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shaq here, and welcome to, well, everything we know about No Man's Sky. If any game could be called procedural generation the game, it'd be No Man's Sky. Every creature, tree, mountain, planet, moon, solar system, entire freaking universe is procedurally generated. Even the ships. Woot math. The gameplay is literally built around the idea of exploring a rich universe with an overall goal of reaching the mysterious center. First, let's talk about how you go about exploring. Every player will start the game on his or her own planet at the edge of the universe. Through mining material from the local terrain, like carbon from trees or plutonium from crystals, you can use these materials to trade them in for units, the game's form of currency, to buy and upgrade your suit, ships, and weapons. These upgrades will open up more areas for you to explore. For example, a hyperdrive upgrade on your ship will open up uh, the jump range, giving you more solar systems to check out. A suit upgrade could allow you to explore a radioactive planet or an ice planet if it's too cold. A plasma or bomb upgrade on your weapon could allow you to break through denser material, letting you explore into, say, a cave network to your heart's content. Other systems can be upgraded and modified to fit your playstyle, be it better shields and weapons for your ship for combat or a bigger cargo hold for trading. Combat has been shown in two basic forms, ground and space combat. Using a hand cannon to blast away animals and rocks and, well, space dogfighting. Sadly, the flight controls have been described as floaty and not very precise by many people who have played it so far, but maybe that's just the player's lack of experience with the game controls. Attacking a creature on a planet or getting a little overzealous with your mining will give you a wanted level. Think Grand Theft Auto. You'll soon find yourself under assault by sentinels, aka self-replicating robots, that will get harder to defeat the more you rank up your wanted level. Death in No Man's Sky does have some weight to it. Throughout the worlds you'll be exploring, you'll see beacons in the distance. Using one of these will allow you to upload your latest scans and resources to the Galactic Database. If you fail to do so before you die horribly to a creepy alien beastie or a space goat, you'll lose your loot and hard work. Speaking of scanning, scanning creatures is, well, the way of leaving your mark on the world, and it's the way of gaining units, the aforementioned upgrade resource. Being the first to scan a creature will allow you to name it whatever you like, so, you know, others will see it as they explore. Speaking of others, multiplayer. Something that comes up every time I talk about No Man's Sky. This title isn't multiplayer. We've been told repeatedly that the chances of finding another human are incredibly slim. Lower, much lower than 1%. So much so that the devs have said it's almost next to impossible to expect to find another player, especially one that you know in real life. Multiplayer has been kept under, well, super vague circumstances, but by no means is No Man's Sky a multiplayer co-op game you'll play with your buddy. It's a universe with 18 quadrillion planets that are actually planet-sized. So, you know, good luck with that. So let's talk about the universe. At the moment, exploring is fine and good, but that's a lot of empty space. Are there space empires? Eh, sorta. You'll see traders coming and going from stations and warping around, pirates that'll attack these traders, and you can jump in and help them or leave them or join the pirates if you like. You can trade between ports, buying low and selling high, and if you know the language, that's right, chatting with NPCs requires knowledge of the language for the creature, and you can get that from trading, or you can find monoliths that are spread around the local area. The races that people have seen so far seem to have certain strengths and weaknesses, like scientists and warriors. Now, factions have been announced in the game, and just like everything else are procedurally generated with personalities and characteristics. The devs have once again vaguely mentioned some form of friend-enemy system through simple interaction, like helping them out in combat, trading, or just interacting with them. Something that I've been critical about the title is how vague the developers have been, but I honestly get where they're coming from. This game is built on the idea of mystery, on exploring and figuring out what's going on and what's out there. So they can't be completely forthright in what's been added to the game. Hell, even multiplayer is still up in the question mark of, is it really even built into the game? You say you can find players, but then you tell us that it's almost impossible to do so. Am I excited for the title? Sure I am. The technology looks incredibly impressive and the scale is really hard to comprehend, it's so large. Though, I think people might be blowing this game's hype a bit out of proportion, like it's the second coming of Space Sim titles. Sure, procedural generation is interesting, but will it really hold your interest for long? How many times can you see a new version of a goat before that gets old? Sure, this goat's green and has three eyes, but honestly, is it really that different than the last planet that had a blue goat with four horns? And what could kill this game for me? I've been playing Space Sim titles 
for ages, so exploring an open giant universe isn't something really new. What could kill it for me? Simplistic interactions with the environment and creatures mixed with a lack of, well, creativity from other style games like Minecraft or Space Engineers, where creating something is in itself a fun part of the goal. Also, zero faction control, like, say, the X series, a game where you had an entire universe to explore. Of course, it wasn't the size of this, but you could actually build and manage your own empire and go to war in that game, or just run around as like a bounty hunter. If you're left with a game that's solely focused on exploration, then I hope the mystery of needing to see what's next is truly compelling, and not just another creature with a randomly placed nose or foot. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Are you excited for the title? And what features are you most excited for? I'd like to see what you guys say in the comments. I'm gonna be doing another video on this particular title before it comes out, comparing it to another game that came out with a whole bunch of hype, Spore. Yeah, I wonder if you guys remember that one. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.